Welcome back to the Torque Test Channel. Today we take a look at a Milwaukee Impact wrench we haven't seen before, which is a rare case on this channel. While brands like DeWalt and their FlexVolt and later Makita now with their 40 volt XGT line have come out with higher and higher voltage tools, many of you in the comments section often ask, when is Milwaukee going to jump up in voltage? Well, the answer to that is that they have already. This is the Milwaukee M28 28 volt impact wrench. No, it's not fuel, far from new, and it's not small, but this thing just oozes weird, quirky tidbits that just rubs my curiosity bone in all the right ways. This 0779-20, even the model number sounds odd for Milwaukee, 0779. Well, we have this fresh specimen thanks to our viewer Connor, who was about as curious as we were just to put it through its paces and see what it does versus Milwaukee's latest stuff. Even its charger looks alien compared to the M12 and M18 fare we're used to using. And yeah, she's a big girl, 12.1 inches long, over a foot long, not going to be targeting too many brake caliper brackets with this one. One of the strangest and perhaps coolest features of this 28 volt line is that the battery can attach from both the front and rear facing directions, perhaps freeing up a small amount of space in the front when needed. I feel if some of their latest models did the same thing, while probably awkward feeling at the same time, it would certainly allow for fitting the tool into some more tricky spots in a pinch. Would love to see this sort of feature come back. And you might need to get that battery pack out of the way sometimes because this one itself is a chonker. Its footprint is larger than a high output six or eight amp hour M18 battery with those larger 21700 cells. And yet this M28, its battery is just a three amp hour. That's in part because of, well, okay, mostly because they need to fit two extra cells per row in this pack to make for a max voltage of 28. If an M18 pack is five cells in a row for 18 working volts, or as many like DeWalt call it 20 volt max, it being four volts per cell. Milwaukee added two more cells per level, needing four total extra in this pack just to make it 28 volts. Adding one extra per level would be a 24 volt max like Cobalt and Flex cordless, this is 28, just basically one step further. So yeah, its size is noticeable, especially compared to this standard XC 5.0 M18 here, but it's not like those combined watt hours of capacity suddenly disappear once at a higher voltage. Theoretically, everything should be running more efficiently with smaller wires carrying less amps, but higher volts and everything's hunky-dory, we shall see. But it's not simply the size of the counterweight on the bottom of this tool that's remarkable about it. Yes, of course, it's the old school Sparky type of Pixies powering this one. And so that's much of the reason for its size difference. But just check it out versus the current full size impact brother from its M18 line, the 2767. That's quite a difference. These two at one time were being sold at the same price from the same brand with very different approaches to that power as we're going to be seeing coming up and a huge difference in advertised power as well, which we'll take a look at that too. Our first test is called Working Torque, five seconds and forward. Here's up against the compact mid and high torque M18s. The M28 is in white. So almost lost it there, hiding behind the M12's curve for a second and the high torque is basically off the charts. 222 foot pounds and this test is not very spicy. It did feel super smooth though, for what it's worth. Just three short runs in like this one and we're already down one bar on that three amp hour 28 volt battery though. Obviously some tools are more biased in reverse than forward, which we'd prefer. So maybe that's the case here, but let's take a look inside this M28 for a moment to see if we can get any further insight on what's going on in this tool before we move further with testing. We're coming at you from the future here after all of our testing from today to take a look. So here's the hammer and spring from the sprung ball and cam mechanism. And here's the anvil, which appears to use both a bushing and a needle bearing acting as a thrust bearing here, which probably accounts for a lot of the smoothness that we felt. These tools, as they launch forward from the spring, with each representing uh, quite a bit of energy coming with them, usually just goes into a thin Delrin bushing to dampen that. The whole hammer assembly has a bearing groove machined into it and also rides on this large bearing on the outside set here. That's not something we've seen before. Usually these sort of just sit there suspended on the planetary output shaft. 
but this tool doesn't use a contained planetary driven by sun gear. It's driven by the planets, I guess, themselves via five pins, which is opposite to what we normally find even in Milwaukee's. This whole assembly though, not super big, not super heavy, while the Milwaukee 2767's hammer assembly comes in at a very heavy two pounds, four and a half ounces, some of the heaviest we've seen. The 0779 M28's comes in at just 1.4 pounds, quite a bit lighter. It gets crazier, further down we have yet another planetary gear reduction with four planets this time, which drives the second sun gear using four pins. But each of these pins have their own needle bearing over-engineered to the max. I'm sure a lot of that double reduction and such is due to the still quite large brushed motor that despite the size doesn't hold a candle to the latest Milwaukee fuel stuff and therefore needs to be gear reduced down quite a bit. Two stages here. And the spring and hammer mass reduced all that to work efficiently without bogging this brush motor down. But all those bearings do make for a sweet ride, sort of like the Cadillac Eldorado of impact wrenches. Let's see if this Cadillac can steam ahead across the finish line in our second test called Max Torque. It's 10 seconds in reverse. Let's see it again in white. So the M28 does prefer reverse where it does do better, but still well into that sort of in between an M12 compact and latest mid torque style of beans. The area under the curve is pretty dominated by the M18 mid torque at six inches long. That tool turns out you can do quite a lot without a lot of length when you're using the right tool. Our last test is called best case scenario 15 seconds in this one's preferred reverse. Here it is again. Three hundred and seventy-eight. So it's not flatlining like the mid torque is starting to do. It still climbs, but pretty tame overall. I think you'd agree. It's crazy how fast modern cordless is advancing every year. Just looking at this change in gap between the mid torque here and this full size twenty-eight volt. Just for fun and because we can, let's rank this one on our leaderboard. Of course, this isn't really fair. This list is mostly quite modern options, but. We got the data, so let's throw her up there. Starting below the 2767 on this full-size impact wrench leaderboard for now, its power runs are turned into modest showings of 22, 33, and 38. Now this one, this one's borderline criminal. While being narrower for sure, its length or where you can fit it versus its power, well that's 31.2 foot-pounds per inch, ouch. Yet this tool does only advertise, as it turns out, 325 foot-pounds. In more ways than one, a holdover from a bygone era. Yeah, it's not rated for a lot of power, but also we made at least that. This 10 second max torque test was the traditional way brands in the past have rated tools, and we made just about exactly that here. Something the uh, current M18 high torque has been pushed down in our ranking a bit due to. Though about as much as many other brands we test. The M28 gets a max of 100% here. $283 as a function of power that it made, yeah, it's not very pretty, 20 points even, that totals 244.2. Yeah, really, meaning it doesn't come in last due to the saving grace of only the DP down here. You can always count on DP to be putting in work on the bottom. So yeah, all the numbers and figures out of the way. I sort of just love this tool, mostly for the novelty, I'm sure and I imagine that's not what they were trying to sell, but the over-engineering smoothness of it and more bearings than you can shake a stick at, this is Milwaukee's first go at higher voltage handheld power tools, and that odd battery with that reverse cowgirl action, I think it can kind of pull it off. Milwaukee seems to be dipping their toe into 36 volt-ish type tools now with the Makita style 18 by two side by side without trying to draw too much attention to it by still calling it M18 but we're here for it. Would love to see what a totally 18 volt, we swear, but you need two of them side by side. One inch impact wrench from Milwaukee, what that would look like. 
Till then, we have tools like this one from yesteryear to enjoy, even if they won't be setting records in the 2020s. Appreciate you joining us for this Curious Case Closer Look. Click subscribe to catch stuff like this every Friday, and thanks for watching.